Dave here, how are you? I'm going to do another tour around my workshop. It's been about a year since I did the last one and I thought you might like to see the updates that I've done and also hear some of the interesting things that have happened during that last 12 months. Here we go. Oh. One of the biggest things that happened to me was just at the end of November in 2014. It was a very, very hot day and it was just too hot to do a video here in the workshop. I'd been doing videos for a little while and, you know, popping some up on YouTube and it was fun. It was good fun and just enjoying the ride. So, as I said, it was extremely hot. So I thought, oh, what am I going to put up on YouTube? I promised everyone I'd, I'll do a video once a week. I, I found a video that I did about a year prior and it was just washing the dogs. And I thought, well, it's hot. We'll do something that makes everyone feel cool. Uh, as I say, in Australia, obviously, our summers in reverse to the Northern Hemisphere got their winter at that time. I edited the video, I popped it up on YouTube, and this is Barry the Pug in the Tub. This is the famous video. Anyway, it wasn't famous before. I ran for about 10 minutes and it was boring, nothing much was happening. So I trimmed it down and then I put some captions to it and some nice music. Popped it back up on YouTube. Well. It had about 140 views over the next two weeks. And I'm sure it was just friends of mine that were watching it and saying, yeah, that was nice, and a couple of thumbs up. So anyway, one night, I woke, as I was get, going to sleep, I was just checking the, how many people were looking, all that kind of stuff, and I noticed there was a bit of activity. You know, there was 10 views in an hour, and I was thinking, hello, what's going on here? And then it went to 20, 30, and I didn't know what was going on. I thought, all right, just a... A bit of a speed up. Woke up the next morning, 160,000 views overnight. Three million by the end of the week. So that's why you will see Barry on my channel forever. He, <laughs> he's been the goose that laid the golden egg. He's a champ as well. So he's just, a, he's my good little mate. And uh, the, there you go. That's why a building channel also has a pug dog as part of the star attraction. <laughs> now, I'm going to continue on with this tour around my uh, workshop. First thing we're going to do is have a look over in this corner here. Now, here's something that I'm going to do. When I review one particular part of that workshop and say, right, here's the mitre saw, or here's the um, table saw or the router, I'm going to point up here, just over my right shoulder, and I'll say, have, there's a link here to that particular video, if I've done a review. If I haven't done a review, then I won't be pointing up. Well, I might point up because I might have forgotten that I hadn't done a review. <laughs> anyway, we'll start with over in the corner here. I think you can see, I think everyone remembers, this is my great-grandfather's workbench. And that's just unbelievably good. I did a review on the Rotex on that particular bench. I cleaned that bench up with it. I had a lot of people say, Dave, you idiot, you've taken the patina off, you've devalued the thing. Well, the thing is, I use it. I'm not selling it, so it's not devaluing it at all. It is a bloody good bench, and I love using it. It's, it's so handy. It's got cast iron dogs in it that have been hand forged. It's got a beautiful leg vise. It's got a fantastic tail vise. Uh, the top is unbelievably solid. I love it. Great bench. Okay, now above that I've got just pegboard and, some, and a battery charging station. Heap of battery power tools across the top there. Gas guns. Also there's some um, my nail guns. And then if we swing over to this side, we have hand saws and power leads. And then down the bottom is my big 15 inch thicknesser. And if you can't see it from there, I'll just throw a photo up. And hold on, there's a, up there, have a look. It's only a very short clip. I might do a better one soon, but just it in action, doing some Oregon. I love that machine. Then further along, we have more power tools up there in another one of the units that I built. Now, that unit wasn't there in the first episode of the shop tour. Beside me here is my docking station and with its dust port. And click this link. It'll take you to how I set this all up and also the dust port. Now it's time for me to move the camera around a little bit. And I'm around the back here now as well. 
So as I said, this unit here is new. It wasn't there before. Moving on, we've got the drill press that's mounted in my docking station. This is fantastic. Check up here for the review on it and for the dust port and everything that I built on it. Moving along, we've got the stops for the, uh, the stops for the miter saw and some of the festival gear that I've got. Now you'll notice that I'm not brand specific, but I do tend to keep the brands with themselves. So all the DeWalt's over there, all the Festool's over here. Uh, Carbotech, of course, is all over the place because they're the large machines that I own. But all of these drawers, of course, have got stuff in them and they're all specific. This one has got all the drill bits. I went through all that. Nothing's changed in there. All the drill bits for the drill press. The next one here has all of the vacuum hoses for the low volume, high pressure system. And then underneath we have other stuff. I'm going to put doors on all of that, but it hasn't happened yet. Fortunately, my assembly table here is hiding all of that so you don't see under there. <laughs> it's a mess. The assembly table, while we're here, the assembly table is going to be replaced. I'm going to do another one, but instead of uh, using the top as a sacrificial top, I'm going to look after it. I'm going to have some pieces that I just throw on. So I'll keep a couple of blanks underneath this table and they'll just get popped on for when I'm using the track saw. The rest of the time they'll be off. I will dog hole most of it up and I also will leave an area here with no dog holes in it because this is fantastic if I want to just sit down and nut something out or draw a plan on the next little project I want to do. This area here without holes and without cuts in the surface is brilliant. There's another project there. When I build this, I'll take you all with me. All right, so now we're back here with a capex and I just did a review on the capex last weekend. Pointing up here, see up here? That's where the review is. Go and have a look. Now also, when you're looking at my reviews, you'll notice there's a lot of pop-ups happen. And that's because I'll do the review and I'll think, oh, I really should have added that note in. And so on YouTube, I have the capacity of throwing up pop-ups. Let the pop-ups run because there's going to be a lot of information there you'll see. Uh, new base for the capex, uh, dust extraction systems running up through there as well. And then along through the back here, more gear, a whole lot of books on detailed fine joinery. Now, <laughs> let me tell you something about my books. They look great, don't they? Have I read any of them? Not one. I was given them by someone, I thought, wow, that's going to make me a better joiner, and eh, <laughs> I haven't had the time to look at them. All right, further down we go, I've got a shop vac underneath, my old drop saw is underneath the cabinets, again, you don't really need to see down there. And then we go down to the corner of the workshop, let's have a look down there. Coming down into the corner of the workshop, I've got my main dust extraction system. This is the big cyclone on a 44 gallon drum. This up here is a two-horse dust extractor. This is the FM300. And I'll do the point again. Look here, and there's the review for this system. Click the links. They work. Uh, now, this system runs under every machine or over above. So there is not one trip factor on my floor. Down in this corner, where my dust extractor is, I'm going to show you a photo taken from that corner back to what I can see over on this side of the workshop. And you will start to re realize how much work I've put into doing this. It's gone step by step. This used to be a concrete slab. No, well, there was no slab here at all. This used to be mud. I poured some concrete out here because I thought, you know what, it might be easier to get around the back of the building rather than treading in mud all the time. I thought, you know, I've got this roof, this, all, this area concreted how about I put a roof over it? So I did that. Nice dry area. Bit of a slope on the concrete, so it was fine. It was outside. Then I thought, you know, this is a really nice area. I might put some pallet racking up in here and store all my leftover timber. Of course, in a previous life, I was a builder. So <laughs> had all my timber stacked here, things left over. Instead of throwing it away to the tip, you know, why throw it away? Then I thought, hmm, this is a nice area out here. I'm losing my workshop on the other side of the property, how it became a lounge room. So how about I turn this into a workshop, closed all the walls in, and put a floor in there, and I'll show you some photos as that was happening, and all the junk that was in here, the transition was huge. 
Anyway, now you see it as it is, and it's continually changing. Right, so we've got past that part. As I say, there's a few photos there that you can see. Down here, I have a bench grinder. Does a great job. Above here, nice cheap TV from a supermarket. Here, a lathe, small lathe. <laughs> For my purposes, it's great. Roll around cabinet here that uh, I assembled. These things are nice, nice big heavy unit. And I thought, you know, that'd be go well in the workshop. And it's solid and it is good. Great for the lathe to sit on. Beside that, I've got another unit, helical head. Helical head on this little machine, it's a cracker. Go and click the link, click this link, and it will show you all about that machine. Uh, around here, I have timber racks, and I've got a couple, click the link up here, there's a couple of shows that I've done on these racks. I could probably have done better, but you know, you, everyone's got to start at one point, and the, the quality of the videos was really poor back then. Not that they're getting much better, but anyway, uh, when I did that, I, I was doing my best, but I was limited by what resources I had. Okay, so below me here I've got the jointer. This is a nice little straight blade 6 inch jointer. On this side here I've got my 9 inch disc and 6 inch belt disc sander. This is a cracker and I will do a review and you know what I'm gonna put my finger up here and point check my review because the review is gonna happen pretty soon and when I do I'll put a pop-up right here that says have a look at it. A little scroll saw I don't use scroll saws much uh, but it's a it's a nice cheap little unit let's let's have some fun with it further down the track. Up here I've got my flammables cabinet and I keep all sorts of things in there that I do not want to catch fire because they'll just um, aggravate the situation. The main thing in this workshop is my table saw and my router table and trimmer. Here we go, I'll show you those. This table saw is the same table saw I've had for years. It's my Carbotec left hand tilter, 10 inch cabinet saw and it does a beautiful job. The only thing I've done to it is that since you guys have been here last is I put a new blade cover, a blade guard on it and it, the reason being it's got a port at the back. So what happens with that port? That's not affecting the blade guard at all. I found with the other, the original blade guard because the dust extractor was sitting right on top here, I'm bending right over here, it was sitting right on top. As it came up it was holding it and it wouldn't let the thing go properly, it was pushing the blade guard against the side of the blade and it was getting a little bit ugly. So I put this one on instead, very, very happy with it. Router table here, and still works like a treat. Love it, love it, love it. Dust extraction all the way through all of this underneath, sucks it down. And I've done reviews here and there, so here, click over, click over there for the table saw review, and also the, uh, the dust extractor review. <laughs> so down here is the multifunction table that I built. This is not an MFT3, not to be confused with Festool's MFT3. I just called it a multifunction table because it does so many things for me. If you click here, you will be taken to what's called a playlist and it will go through all four videos about this particular unit. But just quickly, it's a unit that holds a whole heap of storage boxes underneath. It's a unit that is mobile on casters. I can use it as an outfeed table for the table saw or I can wheel it around to the other side and it's an outfeed table for my router table. It takes a trimmer. It also takes my Craig uh, table clamp. So the clamp plate goes into there and there's a bench clamp that goes on top of that to hold things steady. It also takes my Craig Foreman for doing pocket holes. This is for the big fellow. I've got the two, I've got the K4 and the Craig Foreman. The K4 I use for small jobs. The Foreman, when I was building this unit, it's, that was when it came in handy. Compressed air model, I love it. Works very, very well. Okay, now I have finished the drawers and everything in it. So I'll show you pictures of the drawers. And what this drawer on this side is for all the Craig gear. The drawer on this side is for all the DeWalt gear for this little trimmer. 
as I say, it's mounted in there all the time. Here's a treat that I hadn't shown everyone last time. This is my great grandfather's toolbox. Now, I inherited this. I inherited this when I inherited the bench. And the day that I did, I was a mess. I was in tears. I could not believe it. Now, I, was, I had used this bench, this box, as a place to throw a fuel can on top to decant petrol <laughs> to put in the lawnmower to mow my great aunt's backyard. Now that was back in the day where most people had a you know, quarter acre or a third of an acre. So this box represented a whole lot of stress and worry for me because it just meant I had to mow the lawn and it was buffalo the grass and it was spongy and it was a heavy old Rover lawnmower and I hated doing it. Anyway, she passed away. She was a lovely woman, but anyway, she passed away. And then, you know, when the estate was being divided up, my uncle said to me, David, do you want this? Would you like this? I had no idea what it was. It was just a box. Anyway, it was a mess. It was black. He opened it up. And inside, don't worry about that picture. I put that picture there. That's, that's my great grandfather. Inside was this toolbox. Box. Sliding tools. Now, I'm going to show you some photos inside here. Unbelievable. I was in tears. Couldn't believe it. When I, when I opened this box up and saw everything was in here and someone had just given it to me, I was a mess. <laughs> you can imagine. Anyway, it's beautiful. I'm going to keep this as long as I can. I've even got a payslip in here that tells him, this guy here, back from in 1927, that if he kept up the good work that he was doing, this is working for the um, New South Wales Railways, if he kept up the good work, he would be given sixpence a week extra as a pay rise. Amazing. <laughs> you know, there's things in here as well. I've got letters from my mother uh, that give me the history as well, fill me in on everything. So anyone who inherits this box from me will also have all that history. This is invaluable. I love it. Handmade hinges. Just little things like this. I'll drag this guy up. This is a brass, little brass plane with a timber wedge in the top. This is a bullnose plane. Have a look at that. And the timber wedge. I love it. So much heritage. I use some of the things. People say to me, oh, Dave, you wouldn't know anything. <laughs> you wouldn't know what to do with these. Well, probably on the whole, they're right. That's that for this tour around the workshop from me and Arthur here. Ah, he's got a good mow like mine. Look at that. Ah. I wonder how we would have got on. I never met him. I wonder how we would have got on. Anyway, that's it. Uh, more from me next time. Thanks for watching. See you later.